Some of the best niches for SEO tend to be a little bit shady. And that's because basically more mainstream marketing methods like traditional ads won't allow you to promote. So if we look at a more mainstream query like buy a diabetes supplement, you can see you've got loads of ads at the top. Then we've got Amazon, obviously not going to outrank Amazon. Amazon in this case has actually got two listings. Then we have the GMB and people also ask. And then the organic results really quite far down. So those people have been complaining. In Google's recent antitrust lawsuits, it's basically admitted to doing a lot of crafting of the search results in order to actually promote the ads and therefore make more money. And those of SEOs have been calling them out on this, saying certain terms, the, the way the search results are actually being crafted means SEO is actually really difficult. But this doesn't apply for certain niches. For instance, cannabis and escorts, uh, firearms, these kinds of rather shady grey hat niches where traditional advertising doesn't work. But for that reason, SEO tends to work very well because Google's always going to serve organic results for where there's a market demand and it doesn't take any responsibility for those results, unlike the ad platform where it's actually taking money for it. So if you can rank for these queries, then the, the playing field's a lot more level. So if we have a look at Kraton, this is a basically a form of mild form of cocaine that's gradually being legalized around the world. So by Kraton gets 12,000 searches per month. And you can see the CPC is very low, and that's because it's actually very difficult to advertise. And if we look at the top, we just have organic results. And they're getting 33,000 visitors, 7,500 visitors. So huge volume there and completely uninterrupted. There's very little there competing with the organic results. Similarly, if I switch to Google USA and I just put in buy AR15, then again, decent volume there. We can see top result there, Palmetto State Armory. They're getting 70,000 visitors per month to their page, their category on shop AR-15 rifles and more online. Why you need an AR-15, I'm not too sure. But regardless of what you think, the search results are much more what they used to be in these kinds of niches. So I've been getting a lot of inquiries in these kinds of niches because they do perform really well for SEO. So regardless of what your opinion may be, how difficult is it actually to rank in these niches? One thing you've got to remember with this is Google isn't a vacuum. So what works for one niche or what might get you penalized in one niche might not apply to a different niche. So if we look at something really barely legal, if we look at the escorts niche, which basically entirely depends on location as to whether it's allowed or not and what the requirements are. If we go down, th these websites are basically relying on all sorts of black hat tactics for building links, because if you perform outreach to build links for these websites, you're not going to get accepted. So let's assume that you're doing all sorts of shady tactics to build links to your site because that's your only option. The fact is all your competitors are doing the same thing. So you can't get penalized unless your competitors get penalized. And so everyone's on the same playing ground. So depending on the niche, you can get away with certain things. And the Escort's niche is no exception when we look at how there's actually some really quite low DR sites ranking here. So we've got DR30 and they're still getting 20, 10,000 set visitors per month. This is just in Dallas. Now, I don't believe these DRs for a moment, and that's because with most PBNs, you traditionally hide them from crawlers like Ahrefs and SEMrush, so they're not even factored into the DR metric. So I think these sites are actually much more powerful than they appear, and they're simply hiding a lot of PBNs. Now, pretty much every site like this that I audit or expired domains that I look at They've always got the same sort of link profile, and it does tend to be lots of PBNs, many of which aren't even hidden. So if we have a look at this page again, uh, we're just seeing thousands of spam links. So there's 8,000 links in total, and you can see it's the same anchor text every time, all on Web 2.0 spam. This is the kind of stuff that you would never actually build to your own website normally, but in this niche, you can get away with it. Let's group similar and try and get an idea of more of the diversity that's going on. This one, I suspect, might be a PBN. Now, what you generally find with these link profiles, uh, now that we've grouped similar, there are only 20 links. And what you tend to find is that you'll find one page that's just been stuffed with every single website in that industry. So basically, someone's willing to sell links to this industry, and the whole homepage just gets taken over with all the links they've sold. But this is an extreme example. What if we step back a bit and just look at something like the medical cannabis market or even something like forex binary options trading 
unregulated financial products, which are also a little bit dubious. So in my team, we do outreach to thousands of websites every week, building links to our clients, focusing on high quality links. But with that, we get a lot of data in terms of what sites will actually accept. So we have clients in all kinds of niches, including cannabis, including finance, as well as some adult sites. Now, what we find every time is it simply requires a bit more filtering. When you outreach most websites, a lot of them will come back with a list of requirements because they're used to being having outreach sent to them, and therefore they've got a templated response. Now, what you'll find generally is if you're in a slightly shady niche like cannabis, then you might find either they refuse to link to you at all, or they have a higher requirements, higher price, or you might just find they see any client as a client. If they link to you, it doesn't really matter what, matter what industry you're in. So this is a real benefit of an agency like mine where we're doing this at scale. And so if we find a particular site has got a really high price, we just move on to the next one that's either got a lower price or if one's not willing to accept you, we'll find someone else who does. So this saves a lot of back and forth because we do the back and forth for you. In this case, it says if you're looking for a guest post, we ask for $350 per article. And it says we don't accept casino, CBD, Kraton, SEO, spy, social media buying, say writing, divorce, cannabis, e-cigarettes, vape, adult, dating, weapon or betting content and non-FDA drugs. So this is quite an extreme example. But now here's another version. So here they say they start at $105 per article, so a lot more reasonable. And then it says sensitive themes are $158 per article. So basically, they've just increased the, they've added a premium of 50% for shady niches. So here's an example. So weed slash CBD themes, $158. Remember the original price was $105. Crypto themes, $158. And Forex or currency themes, $158. So this is basically part of the, the math you've got to do when doing your outreach. Bear in mind, these niches tend to actually make a lot more money overall because they have that big SEO benefit. SEO is the only option for, it, for them. Therefore, they do really well. So in this case, extra 50%, I take that every day. I think that's perfectly fine. You still need volume of links. So even if you need to pay more money for them, I'm not worried about that because I know it's going to pay off. Now, an important part of link outreach is negotiation. So anyone can scrape a list of websites and start paying for links. But first of all, we do a lot of checks and screening to make sure these are actually good links and not everyone is buying these links and therefore there's no power left. We make sure we only take really the top 1% of links that we reach out to. But there's also the negotiation process where typically webmasters will, you know, webmasters are smart. They've seen how link building agencies are charging four or $500 per link. And therefore they've said, anyone who reaches out to us, we're going to charge $400 per link. So we basically have to educate them and go back and say, Yes, there's a markup involved, but that's because we do an awful lot of work to make sure we're bu building the right links for our clients. So in this case, we've done some negotiation and they've come back and they've basically said we will accept uh, CBD, Carvo, Vaping, Kratom. But in this case, they're not willing to give a discount for those categories. So again, just a slight variation there. Now here's an example, another example where it gets a little more complicated. In this case, flat rate is $100, fair enough. But it says not for gambling, casino, betting, writing papers, VPN, CBD, crypto, money lending. And then the premium, $125 for links that are gambling, casino, betting, etc. So that's really interesting. Only a 25% increase in order to uh, get these links. But then when we go on a bit, CBD is included in the 125. But then we have what we can't do. No longer do vaping articles, dating sites or adult content. We do not do Kratom or Delta 8 articles. Do not do ads for buying Instagram followers. And yeah, no banner ad space. So this is really interesting. And this is why it's such a manual process when you're working with these types of clients, when it's uh, CBD. We, of course, we talked about the cannabis niche, but the cannabis niche is huge. We've got medical mar marijuana on one end and CBD that's pretty much largely legalized. And then we have the shadier stuff at the other end. So in this case, they're saying we will do CBD with a small premium, but anything that's more Kraton, Delta 8, then we won't do that. So this is basically what we do on mass all day, every day, is finding these opportunities where we might reach out to a 100 or a 1,000 websites, and then we're going to filter out those that are willing to link to our client. And then we have to do the screening process to check that is this actually a decent site 
or have they basically been abused by other agencies working for Kraton CBD companies? And is every link on their site, this you know, small travel blog, are they all linking out to casinos, CBD, etc.? In which case, we probably don't want that link. So it's always this balancing act between still finding good quality links, but also make sure we don't pay through the roof for them and we find the sites that are actually willing to take on these kinds of clients. And then you get some weird ones like this where you're trying to really fit into their requirements where they're saying they'll double the price for CBD, Kraton, Vape, Loan, Crypto, Forex. So on one hand, they're saying, yes, we'll take it, but we're going to double the price for it. And then on the other side, we've got we do not accept gambling, casino, betting, pharma, alcohol, adult, weapons on so it isn't pharma, just Kraton and CBD? I don't. So with all these things, you've always just got to reach out to the webmasters and talk to them to find out if your exact situation is actually going to be covered or not. Obviously, that's very time-consuming, so that's why it's all about having a good system, reaching out en masse to good quality websites, finding out which of those are actually going to accept you in the first place, then working out which are the best value ones there, and then going through to the screening process to make sure these are all good quality, they are going to move the needle for you, and they haven't been abused by every link seller out there. So key, t key takeaways, these, these kinds of niches do make a lot of money, so it's worth investing, especially in links, because all your competitors will be doing the same. It is really going to be uh, an arms race in terms of as SEO gets more and more competitive, these kinds of niches become more appealing. So with AI content, links are basically the only differentiator now. So it's worth getting rebuilding really up your backlink profile while you can before these kinds of requirements get more and more stringent and prices go up 